well, well. Welcome to Preach Can't Preach with Rashad. We are the prophets in the episode, another sermon coming at you from 12 Hour Sports, Zingo TV, uh, AHA Radio, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, anywhere you can find us. Rashad, man, what's going on? Man, the bubble is almost done, man. It's winding down. Watching some of these games right now, man. I'm about to say, man, I, I'm, it's like in the last day, we know Blazers got the last matchup. They win, they're in. Spurs elim- eliminated before tip off. Uh, the Suns and Grizzlies took it, took care of business. Um, and Devin Booker just said that he's a big Nets fan, so uh, he's going to be cheering hard for uh, Karis LeVert, Joe Harris, if those guys are playing uh, to see and beat uh, Dame Dollar, who's been on a tear. Um, it, it don't look good for Devin Booker, uh, but the Suns did go eight no. Yeah, you know, it's just my opinion, but I think Devin Booker's performance, and of course the Suns going eight and zero, I think. I want to say the bubble should become a thing of the future, but I think a play-in game similar to the NCAA should become a play-in thing, like a, a, a play-in game should become a thing going forward, just so you can still have teams who are um, somewhat close and not just start tanking. So, like, it'll give people something to fight for. Like, all right, if we get to nine, we can still make a run at eight or something like that, or maybe increase the the odds of teams that fight for eight and nine in the draft lottery, like kind of incentivize teams to not tank, kind of do something to emphasize, like if you keep contending, you know, it won't be for nothing. Like I know people who feel like, all right, well, we're, you know, the 14, 15 teams, we're going to have the lower odds in the draft pick. But I think if you kind of incentivize the teams to still chase eight and nine, and if you lose, you still get some pretty decent draft odds, it'll, in the kind of incentivize the play-in game as a as a thing going forward. Hell yeah, man! It was very exciting uh, to see the even the Suns had a slight chance, you know, from the, from the beginning, and yet here they are, with, uh, you know, needing a a, a a loss for the Blazers to get in, and you know they were the nine seed, but you know just like the Grizzlies, the Grizzlies getting a couple wins against OKC, that was tough for them. But hey, here here they are, one good game away, and Devin Booker has shown that. He can play with the big boys, and I I think that's the thing that everybody kept saying that he couldn't do, and uh, I think he showed it because all these games were big time games. Yeah, I know there were a few games where people kind of rested or sat, but the, the thing is, everybody on that court is still the NBA player, and it's not like he's with his full cast. He's still missing Kelly Oubre, and yeah. some of the, some of the performances that he put up, I mean, him and Dame, it's nothing short of amazing. So. Either one of those guys can be the bubble MVP. Uh, I don't really care which way it goes. I mean, I, I'm leaning Devin Booker because of the numbers he did put up and his team going eight and zero. But of course, if you know Dame does get the eight seed, you know, outright and putting up fifty and sixty the last couple of games, averaging like thirty seven and nine, it it might end up leaning towards Dame. But I mean, I wouldn't be mad about it. They Booker got the replacement All Star All Star nod and. You just took your team 8-0, and you put on a heck of a show for the fans who don't really see you a lot because you're on the West Coast right. or because your team is bad. You're not on TV a lot. So uh, Devin Booker got exposed to a lot of new fans um, this, you know, during the last uh, eight games. Oh, yeah. You know, I had to go ahead and rip, rip my boy D-Book tonight. Uh, UK strong. You know, we built different over there. Uh, Michael Kidd Gilchrist. Yeah, I, got, I, I got the Fender Suns in the closet, hey, man. My guy, Michael G- Kidd Gilchrist, he built different. He's just not the right way. Uh, you know, he's not the way of Devin Booker and the Cats and AD of the Worlds, but, you know, I, I seen him out there uh, trying to play for the Mavericks today. Um, he shot built <laughs> it. You're right. <laughs> That's funny. Um, so we got a good, important show, man. Um, we've been talking about this for a while, and, you know, and this this is really how we, how we pick our surprise teams. Um, last year, you chose, famously chose the 49ers to be one of the best teams in the league. And they were in the Super Bowl up 10 points in the fourth quarter. Um, I chose the Buffalo Bills based off our what we're going to go through. And and they went 10-6, and six, had two games against the Patriots that came down to the wire. A game against the Baltimore Ravens came down to a wire. Uh, even had Deshaun Watson on the ropes in the playoffs. 
Um, so we 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 seen this, we seen this come to light, and we we know like where to go um, in this. And on top of that, it's kind of like uh, I'm gonna say it is it is what based on all how we feel of ranking wise, but at the end of the day, everybody should have the same consensus of like what we're gonna get into. And I think I think it's pretty good for everybody to know. Um, so I mean, just just to just to start off, we call it our profit playoff theory. Rashad, uh, you 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 kind of molded it at first, and 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 then we took it and, and molded it together. Um, if, if you could think back, when when you thought about this before we get into it, like how did how did you even like brought the idea up? Uh, it was sometime last year, man. I remember I was uh, getting my car service, and I, we were just talking about something random. I think fancy football or something. And then uh, we kind of got on the topic of uh, of like the playoffs, like how people, how can you judge who makes the playoffs? Like, because it's, sometimes it's pretty consistent with like the turnover, like 50% of the teams don't make it back. And uh, it just kind of came up. I'm like, well, normally if you have the best coach in your division or at least one of the two best, and then you got a pretty decent quarterback or that quarterback has an amazing year, you're probably going to get in barring something drastic happening. Right. So it kind of it kind of just started there, and then we kind of started looking at you know, is it is it because the teams have a four play schedule that they can leap up, or is it because of you know a trade they made, or did somebody get injured? Like just like we start looking at like just small little nuances that could affect how your how you can go from seven and nine to ten and six, or how you could have that Sean McVay effect of you come in and transform a team from. The lowly Jeff Fisher days, uh, <laughs> Jared, Jared Goff, Todd Gurley, you know, y'all winning 12 games and then the next year make the Super Bowl. So just, we just kind of started talking about different concepts of how teams can go from worst to first mm. or to second place or um, just just different things. I mean, we'll kind of get into some of those scenarios and, of course, what this stuff is based off of. But the three main factors were always your coach, your quarterback because that's what the main emphasis is always on hiring a head coach hiring a quarterback we do take into account offensive and defensive quarterback just a little bit because you look at like the falcons they lost kyle shanahan matt ryan had a terrible year which which would drop him in the quarterback rankings for that year but the main thing was coach quarterback and your roster outside of your quarterback so Mm -hmm. that goes into you know are you the arizona Cardinals right now when you loaded the wide receiver you got an array of offensive talent, but your defense kind of lacking, or, or are you the Jacksonville Jaguars where you didn't cut everything out and you're trying to rebuild? So all this stuff plays into account. And then, of course, like we said, my like schedule is based upon, you know, just our own opinion. And we, and we won't even deep dive into that, but just the main components will be coach, quarterback, and your roster. Right. So we, you just mentioned that. So our, pre, our profit playoff theory is – do you have a top two coach in your in your division? Uh, do you have a top two quarterback in your division? Um, looking at your roster evaluation as a whole, because we, the reason why we had the quarterback is separate is because we know how important the quarterback position is and why you know why people get mad that they make so much money. Well, they touch the ball every play, so you you got to have somebody who can make the decisions, make the right reads, and you can see. Just for example, just a small one: the Joe Flacco, and then you got Lamar Jackson. Now the now Ravens. You know, they was already a good team, but now it went from good to great, just like that. Um, and then, and then roster evaluation. You know, just like Rashad mentioned, do you have a, a good receiving core? Is the old line struggling? Uh, do you do you have a good special teams? You know, so even even that comes come into effect. And then, of course, like you said, the, the schedule assessment. Um, just just seeing, seeing where things play out, who you're playing, uh, when you're playing them, uh, all all can come into effect in this playoff theory. Um, and I kind I kind of wanted to get into like a little a little like uh, variables, like what what would happen like uh, if if these like things didn't you know obviously the court the coach the quarterback and all that stuff. So like Rashad mentioned, is the injuries, uh, trading signings like A. B. Uh, going to Patriots that would have been a huge upgrade for them. Uh, rookie quarterbacks and coaches that's going to change the way things are made out because. Uh, just 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 last year, you got you got the rookies. Uh, who who was rookies last year? Um, Kyler, Daniel Kyler, Jones, Daniel Jones, Gardner Minshew, and, and you see the struggles they had. And then the rookie co- coaches, it's hard to rank them, just because you don't know. You, you can't prove anything, right? Like, okay, like Cliff Kingsbury came into the, 
the NFC West last year. You are not going to rank him one, two, or three over Super Bowl champion and proven pedigree of Pete Carroll, mm-hmm. Kyle Shanahan, offensive guru. You weren't going to put him over him. And then Sean McVay was coming off of the Super Bowl run. So you can't put him back over back, here. Back, back-to-back double-digit win seasons. Exactly. And, you know, he had basically offensive player of the years and, like, Todd Gurley and Jared Goff when, when they mm-hmm. were hitting. So you couldn't rank a rookie coach over those guys. And especially when he already was – "Quote unquote struggling at Texas Tech had talent and did a lot of games, <laughs> Mahomes. but you yeah, but you can't rank him over those three guys. So no, that's that's a big part of it too. Or even just like look at Matt Rule coming in. Like this is mm-hmm. spoiler, but Matt Rule, you can't. I mean, yeah, he turned Baylor around, but how can you rank him over Sean Payton? No, Bruce Arians. No, and even, and even Dan Quinn who blew the Super Bowl. Right. How can you rank him over those guys? You can't yet, right? So, so the, the, that's that's going to matter. And then, of course, uh, you do have things that that changes throughout the season, and that's the coach getting fired because whether well, that's for the positive, or negative, and you have to rank that accordingly to see what happens. Um, so, hey, hold on, for, like that's really a key thing because, like, what 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 it boils down to is you have a preseason ranking, which we're going to go through right now, but throughout the season things that we anticipate happening will kind of play into the rankings. Mm-hmm. And so so it is a fluid ranking right. because, you know, if you think somebody's going to – I'm not going to spoil it. If you, if you think a player's going to pop, well, now he's not the fourth quarterback ranked. He's the second-ranked quarterback. And if the schedule aligns and the roster's good, that could be why they make a playoff team. That's how you pick your surprise team. Right, exactly. Um, so – Let's go. I, I, the crazy thing is that we have the exact same surprise team <laughs> uh, so far through through this through this process. Um, so let's go. Let's go and get into it. We can we can just uh, before we get into it. So a situation variable. I just want to like give people a little, a little nugget. So you know everybody know I'm a Vikings fan. So 2017 Case Keenum comes in for the injured Sam Bradford week two. All right. So you're thinking, okay, what can they do with Case Keenum as a backup? Uh, quick story, just to just to go through it. That that season, the Vikings had a record breaking, uh, record setting year for defense. Uh, you know, third down percentage, uh, all that kind of stuff. Points allowed. They was one of the best to ever do it in as far as uh, history books. History books. Okay. Schedule. They had a young Sean McVay. The team, the Rams were not there yet. They wasn't the, the team you talked about where they was Super Bowl caliber yet. They wasn't there. You play. You play the AFC North pre Lamar Jackson. So, you know, it's the Joe Flacco, it's, it's the Bengals who've been sorry, and it's the Browns who could barely win one game. So, and th- th- those things matters. And then on top them of that. Hugh ja- them Hugh Jackson Browns. <laughs> and then on top Shout of that. Shout out Hugh. I like Hugh, man. <laughs> and then, and Rodgers go down. So, are you talking about, do you have a top two quarterback? All right, Matthew Stafford, Keenum, Mitch Trubisky, rookie season. Not rookie season, uh, uh, I think his second year. And then, um... Brent Hundley. So Keenum, yes, he's a top two quarterback. Uh, you can debate between Mike McCarthy and Mike Zimmer, who was the best one at the time. Roster evaluation, I think everybody pretty much knows Minnesota has the best roster, but because of Aaron Rodgers was so great, the Packers were always able to, you know, get the best of them. And then, like I said, the schedule assessment when you have the AFC North, uh, the NFC North is missing Aaron Rodgers, Lions can't get right, and then the Bears have a young. This was before Khalil Mack got there. So, it, you know, so it's all those things in the play. 13-3, and three, boom, in the championship game. So you can kind of see, like, where that goes. And I, I know you have one of the variables that everybody knows, the AFC South. Yeah, man. So pretty much when we rank the quarterbacks, you know Deshaun Watson is going to be the best quarterback in the AFC South. And then it's kind of up for debate after – well, coming into the season last year, it was up for debate, like, who's number two? Right. Is it going to be Nick Foles because he just came off the stuff with Philly? So that was taken into account. Is it going to be Marcus Mariota or will it be Andrew Luck? But then what happened? Luck retires out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, yeah. So now so now it's like, all right, what do we rank the QBs now? And then the whole time we were saying Mariota's holding the tights back. So if they ever move on from him, you will have the second-best quarterback in your division, which they did. Foles got hurt week one. Minshew's a rookie. I like Jacob Brissett, but he's not the kind of guy that can take you over the hump. Granted, he was playing good for like the first couple of weeks, mm-hmm. but once Ryan Tannehill came in, he was playing on that same level as 
the Drew Breeses of the you know of the world, stuff like that. So stuff like that can change. How, how the division falls overnight? Yeah, they already oh, they, they already had Mike Vrabel, who's arguably the second or third best coach in the division. Now you got Tannehill, who's playing lights out. He's the second best QB behind Deshaun Watson. And that's why they're in the playoffs. Exactly. So let's go through the divisions real quick, just just to break down for everybody. Uh, so to start in the AFC West, uh, you talk about you know trying to trying to decide who is the best coach to quarterback. Obviously, when you come to the, the AFC West, the champs are here. Yeah, you come to AFC West, <laughs> easy decision. Pat Mahomes, number one, and Reed, number one for us, consensus. Now, we, we, we know what the Chiefs bring. And the defense that they had last year, like, they actually played great football. Like, you, you're talking about a team that you, was, you really wasn't worried about. Uh, and then, they, you know, with, with Tyreek, Kelsey, all these different guys, like, they, they had the overall package. So, um, and, then, and then you got to think about this, too. During the year, Mahomes dislocated his knee. So, when he goes out, that would have that would have changed the QB rankings. Exactly. But but of course he came back and they won that run and won the Super Bowl. I'm about to say. But even, let's say let's say it was more devastating. What happens exactly? But but even even then when Matt Moore came in, I the way he the way he was playing. I mean, you look at he you you could you might have might have debated he might have been could have been the top two just just because Rivers having the bad Rivers, Rivers oh, man. man Jesus Christ boy Rivers was not Rivers we know um and then you know Derek Carr Derek Carr was playing solid he was playing consistent and then of course uh you know uh, with the change of quarterbacks of Joe Flacco to Drew, Drew Lock so you you could even still still put Matt Moore in the top two which they you know they played Green Bay tough. Um, I think on Sunday football, then they played Minnesota back right after that and beat them. So that was two good teams who who made the playoffs. So you see yeah, the they hit yeah. they hit on right exactly one. exactly. So that, that's pretty good. Now in the AFC West though, this trying to decide who's the second best coach I think is like is is nightmare because John Gruden, Vic Fangio, Anthony Lynn. Like when you talk about some of the best coaches, like they in their own style, their own way. These are these are you know top coaches and, and they can be Vic Fangio defense you know know about that in Chicago, uh, Joe, John Gruden the historic about him and then Anthony Lynn man, like it just it, it's something something about him that he's a leader of men and you you want to follow him so those three guys so how did you rank these three? Well, of course we had Andy Reid one. I went Anthony Lynn number two. I just think it was a bad year last year by mostly Rivers, not on the coaching standpoint. Mm. I mean, he, they they navigated through the Melvin Gordon thing, and for the most part, the Durban James thing, and they were still a very very competitive team. But late turnovers, which isn't the coach's fault, cost them a lot of games. <laughs> so I put Anthony Lynn number two, Vic Fangio at three. And I hate to do it, man, but I had to put John Gruden at four. <laughs> Um, I went. I went uh, similar with you. Anthony Lynn is my second coach in that division. Um, I went. I went John Gruden, then Fangio. Um, but I think that's more of the the style that the team is like. Gruden uh, the offensively, that's where the team built. He's offensive on the Broncos. Uh, this year so far, they've been they 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 pretty much getting the offense right, which is a good sign for Von Miller, Bradley Chubb, and those guys on defense. So um, I, I think it's very very tight knit. Like any orders. It's probably you know it, you, you this would get this got to be a change by week by week like and we if we go see John Gruden do something with terrible clock management you got you got to put him in the folder for the following week and you got to you know you got to alternate how do you see these three teams coming out because we we know is the AFC we know is the Chiefs division to lose and based off these coaches like that's where you're gonna go um, and for the quarterbacks uh, we know Bat Mahomes number one so with a, with a huge drop off <laughs> after that. <laughs> Huge drop off. You are actually correct. It's, it's levels. It's levels to it. It's man. levels, and then we had the same. We had the same ranking. Derek Carr um, is the second best quarterback in that division. Um, the Chargers, they had Tyrod Taylor and they had Justin Herbert. So we know that that rookie, that rookie quarterback, at some point he's going to play. All all first round quarterbacks play. They start at some point. So Justin Herbert will be there sometimes. So you have to automatically give him four. And even on top of that, Tyrod Taylor will still be four. Even behind Drew Locke at the Denver Broncos, and he had a great season to end his uh, his campaign last year. He went four and one as a starter. Um, you know they up they could have been five and zero, should have been five and zero, up twenty against somebody against Minnesota and and, and lost that game. But um, that we we had the exact same ranking. So Pat Mahomes, huge drop, Carr, uh, 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 Drew Locke, and then the Chargers quarterback. So we the, doing that right there. So that's already a, a juggling. Juggling because you got car two 
but you know John Gruden four. Yeah, so the, a key thing for me on that quarterback part too is I'm expecting a leap from Drew Locke this year, but because he hasn't made it yet, I still and I, I value Derek Carr pretty high, so um, I put Carr second to start the year off. But I'm expecting a leap from Drew Locke, mm-hmm. so that will change throughout the year. I, I'm expecting a lot to be. You can't be one. Mahomes, it, Mahomes is great. Mahomes is Hall of Fame right now, pretty much. But you know, I, I expect Locke to emerge as the second best quarterback, and then that'll bump Carr down to three during the season. That's that's my expectation. Um, so with, with Denver, Denver's roster, uh, like so, you know, out of all these teams, I do like what Oakland did. I did like what Denver did this off season, um, and then of course the Chargers. Like, they these rosters in the AFC West are loaded. Like uh, we gave, so we give we give out roster grades, and then they they they're assessed it with some kind of point value, and for the most part, everybody got at least at least a uh, a B in this in this roster building. So that's that's pretty good for a division. And uh, with this, everybody roster the same. This is where the the schedule and, and how good of a quarterback you have will put you over the top. And that's why that's why I don't really think a Chargers or 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 a Raiders team or, or the Broncos can compete for the division but definitely compete for the wild card i, I think i think it's can if kansas city is going to lose it it's going to be because my homes get hurt and you have to play a back of quarterback otherwise i don't see it yeah unless you just run off a bunch of crazy games like unless you just kind of get a great schedule and run off 13 14 wins something like that you, you probably won't you probably won't win the division exactly but but see to me, when it comes to roster, this is where your coaching comes into play. I know you say quarterback. I, th- I think it's more of the coaching because can you maximize this roster? Like, I've rated the Chargers as having the best roster in this division. And to your point, how far would a quarterback take them? Mm-hmm. But but I have the the Raiders as a B-minus roster. But, you know, coaching-wise, wh- what can John Rudin coach them up to be? Because they've been trying to accumulate draft picks you know, will Josh Jacobs start catching the ball more this year? Will y'all stick with Derek Carr as a QB? It better. You know, <laughs> like like who who's gonna emerge as that receiver that you guys need? You know, Ruggs, Williams, Renfro, Waller. So and then defensively, they got they they got to make some some stuff happen, man. You traded Khalil Mack, and you had some guys get injured last year, so you got uh, Cleveland Farrell. So what can John Gruden do with this roster to potentially get more wins than last year? So. Uh, to have the worst roster at you know B minus, that's pretty good. That's pretty I good. graded Denver. I graded Denver and Kansas City the same, um, but I had the Chargers as a A minus, B plus B plus, and then uh, the Las Vegas Raiders B minus. Uh, and, and just just to point on the schedule, like like you said, it, it's up, the schedule is most based on how you feel the team will play against the other opponents and when they play. So we're not really going to go into that too much, but it does play it does play a role because. You got a worst play schedule. Hey, here, here comes the surprise. Um, so the, and then of course we got COVID going on, man. Oh so, yeah, COVID. You know, yeah. you know, you know, you know, road games won't be the same without fans. That's uh, that's also of course, true. Of course, you got to always take into account East Coast to West Coast trips, West Coast to East Coast trips. Um, normally, you have the London games, like all that kind of stuff, would play a factor on the schedule. Do you get back to back road games? Thursday night football games too. Yeah, the Thursday night game. When, when is your bye week fall? Are you gonna have to play like nine weeks in a row? So there's different stuff like that plays into account on your schedule. Do you do you have a schedule loss? Like, do you play two tough teams then a, a team you should beat and they catch you off two tough weeks? Stuff like right. that. Uh, let's move on to the NFC West, where I think this is another another division that was kind of crazy. Uh, we talked about a hot topic, right? We talked, <laughs> we talked, we talked about uh, Cliff Kingsbury earlier about, and he he proved like he he's legit, and it's crazy for right now he has to be the worst one in the division, and that's not even saying anything. Like his worst, his his number four ranking would be a, a two or three in probably a lot of divisions. Uh, I think Cliff Kingsbury has shown that like he can be one of these great these good coaches and offensive minded. Like yeah, he's smart and. You know, being with Kyle Shanahan and being with Sean McVay, Pete Carroll, that's that's no that's where it get hard. I know I know we both rank McVay third in this one, and we have our back and forth. I think Kyle Shanahan is the second best coach in the league, um, and you got Pete Carroll as number two. Uh, I mean, number one in this division. So you know, and and that's why you can see uh, Seattle, and San Francisco be so close, like all the games, because the coaching matchups is is, is chess chess moves, chess moves back and forth. Um, but I think I think where this division really get crazy is the quarterbacks, and yeah, we got we got to talk about this one. This this is where 
I think I gotta explain myself. I th- okay, yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let you go first on that one. Then. Go, you go first. All right, well, of course, I I think we both think Mahomes is number one and Russ is one point went one a one b like after yeah. the, the second best quarterback in the league. So we both have Russ at one, but at two, mm-hmm. at this is the key point at two. Based upon his talent, you already put Kyler at two. Yes, Kyler is my number two. Now, now, I'm going off of just what's already been seen and proven. So, I put golf at number two. I know people hate Jared Goff, but after what he did last <laughs> year, you should, you, you should hate him because he was terrible. But, you know, for two years, dude put up some crazy stats, and he was right there on par with Dak and Wentz. Just a, just a tad bit below. So, now, I think Kyler can ascend to number two, like I was saying about Drew Locke. But coming into the year, I'm putting Kyler at four just because he's coming off a rookie year. And, of course, I have Jimmy G at three. I think Kyler Murray is – all right, so if, you, if, you did a, if we did a quarterback ranking, he's, he's definitely in my top 12 already. I, I, think, I think when you watch him from the beginning of the season to the end, it's a whole different, it's a whole different monster. And he's coming. And that's why, that's why I could pre- predict this Arizona Cardinals team to be better than expected just because of Kyler Murray's ascension. So if he doesn't have that, then you're going to see the Cardinals still struggle, especially in this tough NFC West where all four teams are, are solid to great teams. We see the four Niners went from the bottom to the top, like just like that. And the, it's a cycle. This whole division is a cycle. The Rams were sorry, and then boom, right on top. So Seattle been the most consistent. But uh, I think Kyler Murray has to be up there just because, like, he, he – I, bro, I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's like when when Lamar dances around and Kyler dances, I'll be like, "Oh man, something about to happen crazy." And um, I think with getting D Hop, getting Larry Fitz, and having Larry Fitzgerald, Kirk healthy, like this can be a this can this can be a dangerous team. And Ken Drake back there in the backfield, he has all the weapons he needs. And you know, quarterback, you know, you know some quarterbacks don't have that and, and they struggle. Well, Kyler Murray has no excuse. And I think with Clip, the Clips offense, hick of Kyler Murray, man. I, I think I think at the end of the season he will be a top ten quarterback. Yeah, to your point, it's about five guys that when they have the ball and start moving around, you, your eyes light up. Like when yeah. I see Aaron Rodgers on the move, what? Lamar on the move, <laughs> Mahomes on the move, Watson or Kyle on the move, I'm like, oh, something about to happen. So like those are like the five guys that I, I feel like anything can happen at any given moment, and then they just gave this guy DeAndre Hopkins for nothing. Like, come on, man. You already had Larry, Larry Legend. Age, aging, but still getting you eight, seven, 800 yards. Christian Kurtz spent a lot of last year injured, and you still have Butler, Isabella, Drake in the backfield, and Cliff. I mean, the, the dude know how to call some plays. Yeah, another, like, another year of the office, man. So another he know year. how to call some plays. So outside of their roster holding them back, they could be a – uh, they could be a sneaky team depending upon how their schedule falls or right. stuff like that. But um, their roster, offensively, phenomenal. But defensively, I'm not a fan of it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm more of a, a C-plus on the roster because, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> the, yeah, defense, yeah. The, the, the offensive line still needs some work. The defense needs plenty of work. So they, they'll be an offensive show, but defensively, man, you'll be it'll be a shootout every week. You know what's crazy? Like this, this the this division. How good as it is, two teams, their roster. We we don't think they're close to the four ers and that's the Rams and Seattle, and that's even with the Jamal Adams trade, um, even with getting Jalen Ramsey, and that's because you're so top heavy that you don't really, like you don't like Jamal, Bobby, Russ, Lockett, DK, and then you know, the, and then you you you're hoping for you know you're hoping for. You know the the what's what's the corner the long corner um I can't think of his damn name uh it's my Griffin uh yeah grit you got Griffin you got you got Diggs back there you got you got pieces but are you gonna have that depth issue I, I like Jordan Brooks being drafted I think they're gonna be fast at the linebacker position but you lost Kleiner you don't really have that pass rusher to get to the quarterback and then you're looking at the Rams outside of Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey on that defense like. How 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 scared are we all are that? Like we are really not. And and like that that really buoys that defense. You got the best pass rush in the game, and you got a top two corner, and you could debate in the more corner. But I, I, we both fair type of gear. Yeah, we so. we gonna go get more. <laughs> yeah, it's but, a, yeah, yeah. I mean, you got two of the best defensive players, but outside of that, what else? Right. And then like you, like if if Jared Goff not if Jared Goff not gonna be uh you know two like you saying, you know up there up there at two, 
if you can't if you can't make the the Rand offense work better without having a girly behind them, you know, with 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 not Brandon Cooks this season, you know, that's that's where the Rams can you can see, okay, this team is really good, but why are they six and ten at the end of, at the end of the year? Like, you know, you you ask yourself these questions. How, how good of a coach McVay is, how good of a uh, uh, you know, star talent they have on the team, why are you struggling? And, you know, and, and that can be the reason, like your debt purposes and not having enough guys, not, you know, you got a lot of A guys, but these B, you need a lot of Bs if you want to be consistent. Man, let the Rams have a losing year. I guarantee you, McVay going to take that off from ESPN. <laughs> go get, in, go, go hey, get that was, in that booth. Hey, that was crazy. I, I do I do like that. I do like that one, though. Um, another, another hot topic division um, is the AFC South. We talked about it earlier how you mentioned about the Andrew Luck days and being retired. So now that he's gone, um, and we we can officially you know see there, um, we both we both we both put Minshew last. Um, do you want to make any amendments to that, or you think Phillip Rivers is safely number? Uh, or you you have Rivers pretty high. You have him second uh, over Tannehill. We, we both we both had Watson first. Um, do you want to make any amendments, or are you good right now? I mean. I Watson think, is. I think. I think Watson but, clear one. I think. Yeah, Watson is like the Mahomes. Like it's it's him. Then it's a it's a doggone gap. Right. Like it's it's a gap. Like Rivers on his last legs. Tannehill had a phenomenal year, um, but can he sustain it? That's kind of gonna be the question. Can okay. He sustain I get that? that. I can understand that. And and then of course Minshew, just as a quarterback alone, he put up similar numbers to Kyler and Daniel Jones. So stats wise, he had a phenomenal year. Right. But but now people kind of know. You no, know, got some film on him, what to expect from him, and some of his yards and stuff did kind of come in garbage time because they were losing some games. So, I I don't think Minshew can be second or third. So he's last by default, and of course Watson's one by default. But I think with you know a renewed focus in Indy, Rivers can be the second best QB in this division. So if 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 Rivers was to be sorry, let's say like Peyton Manning year. And Jacoby comes in. Are you? Oh, Jacoby gonna be third. Then I'm, I'm putting it behind Tannehill. Okay, uh, I just I just want to see you where you at on that one. Uh, this is also a different debate about coaches. Um, it's it's hard. It's hard, man. It's hard to rank these coaches. This, I'll say one thing about the, the QB too, man. Like if a QB go down in this division, it throw the whole thing in disarray. Because you remember <laughs> the year Andrew Andrew Luck was out the whole year. Yeah, and they and they had Jacoby. Man, Blake Bortles from the Jags. And Mariota, Jazz ten and six, Titans nine and seven, both made the playoffs. But Andrew Luck went there. And look, even oh. that year, Watson only started six games, played in seven. He got hurt, so of course somebody saw it, had to win the dog on division. Man, oh, that's nasty. Like, like that, that was the only year Bill O'Brien had a, a terrible year as a head coach. He was four and twelve that year. Outside of the, and Watson won three of the games. So. But I was, I, I mean, T.J. Yates and uh, Tom Savage, come on, man. Yeah. E- even Bill O'Brien can't work with that. And people already call him inept for his Yo, timeouts we... and play calling sometimes. But Bill O'Brien is the best coach in this division. Man. I don't want to hear yeah. nothing else. Bill O'Brien is the best coach in this division. There we go. And I'm right there with you because I'm sorry, man. Okay, Bill O'Brien the coach? Yes. If you want to say the GM, okay, whatever, man. You want? That's fine. That's fine. If you want to say Bill O'Brien, the GM, that, hey, that ain't it. <laughs> hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna argue with that. I'm not gonna argue with that one. But the coach, yes, you are talking about like you said before Watson, he was still winning divisions. Uh, it's even with a great defense and being able to play with the the, the Brock Osweilers, the Savages of the world. Like that's that, that's not gonna cut it. And when you get a guy like Watson, you're the best coach in the division and you're the best quarterback. It's the reason why Houston Texans are always consistent. Why they always nine and seven, ten and six. They're right there always. Now, do they have the t- the team to be a Super Bowl contender? You know, maybe, maybe not. I mean, Will Fuller's always hurt. Yeah. You know, why always hurt? Like, so you always you got a lot of injuries to your best players, but um, and no clowning. They trade the clown. Trade so clown and trade D Hop. So, so on, on the <laughs> roster side, you've had some turnover. Yeah. The the the, <laughs> roster, the roster has stepped back a little bit, um, but can can that coach and can that quarterback prevail them? Uh, and I think I think the rest of the division we we pretty much put um, pretty much put uh, Jacksonville coach I can't think of his name uh, Jay, Jay Gruden that's what I'm going with uh, <laughs> it, 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 after it's, probably about about four or five weeks it will be it will be Jay Gruden hey Jay Gruden is smart I, I see what you're doing Jay I see what you're doing down in Jacksonville um, you have you have Frank Wright second I have Mike Verbal second um, is, is there a reason why you like you have him so high is it because of the offense because I'm going with Verbal in the defense. 
on on this side because he want to run the ball. That's why Derrick Henry is so effective. So and that that's kind of why why I feel like he's number two. It was a toss up for me, but the deciding factor was when he had a decent to great quarterback and well great quarterback Andrew Luck. They were playoff bound, eleven you no know, ten eleven wins, mm. and then last year with Jacoby. They didn't really stumble. Like they, they played a lot of close, tough games. Like they started out pretty good, but down the stretch, Ty getting banged up and some other stuff started happening. Like no receivers were really stepping up to kind of help out. Of course, you had Jack Doyle, Ebron doing that thing, but last year really kind of I won't say sold me on Frank Wright to put in second, but it just kind of convinced me that when he has the right stuff in place, he can be that guy. Versus, I like Mike Vrabel, but the Titans, as we know them, they're always going to be us. A seven to nine to nine to seven team. I can't see Rayburn getting them to a ten win team. Like I can see Frank Wright being a ten plus win guy perennially. And I can agree with you on that point because they do have the best roster. Uh, we both ranked that at the best roster in the division. I mean, when you brought over Buckner, you you have T Y. You got Mag. You got this stud and Jonathan Taylor who's going to be really great. Um, Malik Hooker. Uh, you got you got you got town Darius Leonard. You know, all pro linebacker or pro bowler linebacker. He's 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 up there. Um, the Colts, man, they they really have everything, and I think that's why me and you had them in the the Super Bowl last year before Andrew Luck said adios. Um, this like the Colts roster is here, um, and can you know can they get over the hump of Phil Rivers maybe falling off maybe or can Frank, Frank Wright win the, those close division games versus a uh, Bill O'Brien versus a uh, Mike Vrabel? Those are things we're going to have to find out and see. Um, so. We we pretty much on the same on the same page. I, I think the Colts is the most consistent. If you're gonna if you're gonna take a bet on somebody in this division, you take the Colts because they go they're gonna have a they're gonna have a good quarterback, a good coach, and they're gonna have the best roster in the division. So you you can it's really gonna take a lot for them to to fall off the map. And then one more point about Rivers, man. I mean, look at who he was going against in his division last year. You're going against lights out Broncos. Raiders were feisty competitive. And, of course, we are talking about how loaded the Chiefs and great the Chiefs are. I mean, granted, the AFC South is a step down, so maybe he can, you know, That's just not, true. Play That's as, true. Not, yeah. not play as bad against teams like the Jags are depleted and the Titans have lost. They lost Conklin. They lost Logan Ryan. You know, they – they lost a few things on the defensive side, so I think you know you got a, a similar roster to your Chargers roster because Chargers roster is loaded and Colts is loaded too. So maybe if Rivers can kind of find some of that, just a slight little piece of that old Rivers magic, <laughs> along, along with you know familiar play calling, familiar coaching style. I think he can be okay. Hey, help the Colts, you know, be, I would, a, I be would, a safe bet. I would say also a good point that you just made: the offensive line is a complete. If you so we when we rank these rosters, yes, we do a, a whole roster in like a whole roster building. But we talk about if you just rank the offensive line of the Chargers versus the offensive line of the Colts, it's nowhere near each other. Colts is a top five, top three offensive line in the game. You got you got the, all these guys there versus Chargers. They were struggling for a while. So if Rivers got time and not have to force anything, you know, three seconds, got to throw the ball to Keenan Allen because he's about to die. So. <laughs> so you know, it's a, I, I, I get your point on that one. So I do like the Colts uh, as a team this season uh, to bet on. Um, speaking of another quarterback who's who's, who's pretty good, getting up there, pretty much uh, age. This whole division is old now at quarterback. NFC South. Now, who do you think is the best quarterback in the in the South? Man, this is gonna be controversial, but I don't really care. I hate the Falcons as an organization, as a franchise, all that good stuff. But Matt Ryan is the best QB in this division. I don't care if you say Matt Ryan. I don't care if you say Matt Ryan. How everybody trying to say it? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Number two is the best quarterback in this division, man. And to me, is I think it's pretty easy. Like Brady's older, legacy wise, of course, him and Breeze have the leg up on Ryan, of course. But right. present day, number two, Matt Ryan. Right, I, I was I wasn't you know we was talking about I wasn't, wasn't really like here for all that you know breeze the top five and all that stuff and when his arm is failing him toward the end of the season, um, we seen we seen the play Brady against Titans in the playoffs, prime Brady would have won that game. I'm sorry, I don't care. He had the one yard line, the five. He's gonna get the he, he, like, they're gonna put points on that board, and they struggled last year. But now you know they are they are in better offices. Brady's in a better office than he was in New England. Um, but I can't. I can agree with you on that. I think. I think Matt Ryan. Um, he always get the. You know, he always get the butt of the jokes because they lost the Super Bowl, or whatever. But um, 
Matt Matt Ryan's here, man. I I think I think he he established himself as the best quarterback. Um, and you can like I said, you can you can always debate it if you want to. Um, I I just don't think you you you, you should. But because he's the best quarterback doesn't mean he has the best coach. We had Dan Quinn fired last year in week five. So, oh, I was, I was, man, he, I was on he, Dan Quinn hey, hey. bandwagon bad. I'm like, look, my, my man need a pink slip at Hartsfield waiting on him. They're losing too many games. And the crazy thing is, he low key really is the last coach in the division. But by default, because Matt Rule is a rookie head coach for Carolina, he got to go to number four. But we both know Dan Quinn. This, this is a team that can have this up and down season because they might lose their coach for the good or for the bad. Um, and we're going to find that out if, if Dan Quinn can survive another year. Um, so with that being said, with, with having Tom Brady or Drew Brees, and if we say Matt Ryan number one, and you can debate who's better, Brees or Brady. I went Brees uh, as, my, as my second one, and uh, Brady, went Brady, and you went Brady. So the, the good thing we do know is they had the best two coaches in this division. So with, with, with Sean Payton, both of us are consistent number one, Bruce Aarons are number two. We know, we know the Saints are always going to be there because – of Sean Payton, and I think as long as they have Sean Payton, like I don't really care who the quarterback is, they they're gonna they're gonna find ways to move that ball because with even with Luke McCown had a 400 yard passing game, Teddy Bridgewater was undefeated, Drew Brees, I mean the Asian guy he is, he can still do what he got to do because he's he's in that system. So, um, and I think Bruce Arians, we we know the story about him, the kangaroo hat, my Evans, Godwin, the surrounding pieces of for Tom Brady, all these are great signs for them. So. Um, the Saints, the Saints and, Buc- and Buccaneers. I mean, obviously, when you have a good, a good quarterback and the top coaches, here you are. Oh yeah, man. Then look at the rosters, man. Like the Saints roster, elite, man. I, it, it, there, like there's this, really, this. there's really no weakness. We talk about weapons. Got it. I was gonna say, man. O line got that, it. That, 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 the, the weaponry is crazy. D line, they got it. Corners, like they got it. Linebacker, Demar Davis, one of the best in the league. Got it. Like they have everything. Kicker. Will Lutz will never miss. Got it. Like, like this team is from top to bottom one of the best rosters in the league. And you know, I love to beat them. You know, when, when we, I love, I love playing them. Uh, you know, if fans, fans were allowed to go to games this year, I go. On, you know, Christmas Day. I think they play Christmas Eve. I go to that game. Like, you know, I enjoy it because I'd be a good, good environment to go to. This Saints team is just off the wall, man. And um, I, I think they, they had the clear cut best, best roster in the division. Oh yeah, I, th- I think it's clear cut as well. But I put the. I won't say the Bucks are a close second, but you know I, I think the Saints have a, a A roster, and the Bucks are kind of like in that that B plus range because they still have a few a few nicks and crannies on defense to fix. Yeah. But I, I trust Todd Bowles to fix it. You know that that kind of goes into the coaching side. Bruce Aarons can handle your offense with that that weaponry. If Todd Bowles can elevate the defense again, how they did with Shaq Barrett and those guys, and you got uh, Devin uh, Devin White. Yeah, Devin White. Down I was about there. to say Bush. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, you got you got Devin White down there, man. So they they've kind of started to fill in and you know fix the defense a little bit. And then uh, a point about the Saints, man, like schedule wise, they have one of the greatest greatest home field advantages in the NFL. Like that uh, yeah. that New Orleans Superdome goes crazy. So they could lose some close games this year because they don't have that crowd to energize them and drown out other teams' play calls. So. That could be a, a huge fact on, on their schedule this year, but I think with Sean Payton, best coach, Drew Brees, top. I mean, I got him at third, but but his I mean, his three is better than a lot of threes. Time, yeah, yeah, yeah. All time quarterback, and then just that roster. The Saints should be a, a pretty good contender for this year. Um, moving on to the AFC East, you talked about how you know Bruce Arians controlled the offense and 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 Todd Bowles controlled the defense. The same thing over here in New England. You got Man. you got Bill Belichick, the GOAT, um, defensive-minded GM, better than Bill O'Brien. But Bill O'Brien did learn from Bill. And so far, he ain't really – I know a lot of people kill Bill, but he ain't really messed up too bad yet. We're going to see how good David Johnson is <laughs> for, for them. But uh, Bill Belichick, um, of course, and Justin Daniels on the offensive side. We had, we had dual adjusting when Cam Newton got signed because we had the New England quarterback as the four person. Um, oh yeah, still well, I, I was not rolling. Yeah, yeah. We, Brian Hoyer, I was not rolling. Didn't matter. Yeah, but Cam Newton, that is that is a different player. Um, I, I I think I think it's until I see it, until I see him, like this is one of those I, I can I can adjust mid season because until I see where he's going, if he's gonna stay healthy, 
I'm going to put Josh Allen slightly above, and that's only because. Slightly? Okay. Well, you, <laughs> hey, you funny. Man. <laughs> well, well <laughs> I, can't, I can't disrespect Cam Newton that much, okay? Like, so I'm going to say slightly just because Josh Allen has his struggles uh, accurate, being accurate with the ball. Sam Donald has his struggles just because he got Adam Gates. So, uh, those, you know, those two factors in the play, Cam Newton can catch up. And with Josh McDaniels and Bill Belichick, it's like his. Even though I got him at two, um, I feel I feel like he's you know very very uh, should be one at some point in this in this season if he's continues to stay healthy. And speaking of Adam Gates, I have him fourth on the coaching yes. ranking, but let him get fired and they promote Greg Williams. Oh, I gotta adjust it. I don't know who gonna get demoted. I'm about to say who you gonna demote? <laughs> like somebody, man. Flores, McDermott. I don't know, man. So, Somebody, I don't know. The, the, the Jets roster is atrocious, and but yeah. their defense oh. last year was was solid. Yeah, and it's just something about Greg Williams, man. Guys play hard for him. Like that year, they had Hugh and they fired Hugh. Greg Williams went and won five games on the back end. So, I mean, I can't say imagine if he had the roster from the beginning could have <laughs> won eight, eight eight to ten games, but he won five games with the Browns roster that Hugh Jackson didn't do much with. And then I just look at, like, sometimes when coaches get fired, that can either elevate a team or it can make a team just yeah. start tanking. Like, Ron Rivera was, you know, left Carolina last year. I don't want to say resign. I don't want to say fired. But he left Carolina last year. They was they started getting blown out. Like, they, <laughs> like he, right. he was holding the Panthers together. But then once he left, they started getting blown out. But then you have, like I said, the Greg Williams thing where Brown started winning the game. So I wonder if – Jamal Adams got traded, of course. I wonder if Adam Gaze is out, will they step up and win some more games? I'm saying no Jamal, no CJ Mosley. Just just got the, just got the worst roster in like one of in the league, like one of the worst ones. I mean, and, I did say Donald was the best QB with Josh Allen second, so I guess that's something. Yeah, uh, but how how much? How, like, I know I know we got they got the best coach, and if Cam Newton can maybe ascend to number one, would that be enough for New England to to win? Because we, we we know the defense is gonna regress because all great defenses man. take a take, take a step back. So but, I mean, I, that's on on this roster, man. I, I can't trust. I love yeah. them, but I cannot trust the winning this year, man. Like they to me, the Wingling is a risky bit. You right, you right, and I can agree with that uh, the roster the roster is not as great as now when people are dropping out. Um, the one of the best players, Jerron Mayo. I mean, he's he's going so. Um, not Mayo. Uh, Hightower. That Hightower, yeah. Tripping. Same same position, guys. Um, but Hightower's going so and you know, Slater almost almost went out, I think. Uh you got a couple of running backs, a couple of defensive players, but it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna be very tough for these for the Patriots to to win just with Bill, Josh, and Cam Newton. I mean, it's possible. They can do it. I I believe in Bill. We got you gotta believe in Bill. Um but at the same time, like Elements thirty four they got they just signed Lamar Miller because they're not sure about Michelle. You got James White there; he's a baller. Um, can Harry Neal take a next step? The tight end game has never been; they haven't found that yet. And then Sanu, Sanu's going to be solid wherever he goes. So you know you, you don't really expect too much out of him to be stardom, but uh, still a good player. I don't know; it, it, it's going to it's going to take an MVP Cam Newton for for me to put them over, over a team like Buffalo, who has who I rank as the best roster in this division. Um, top to bottom, and Trent Davis White stayed in, didn't opt out, so that kind of saved him there too. Man, second best QB in Allen, second best coach in McDermott, and I gave him a B plus roster. The Bills are the safest bet, but the the thing about New England, if Bill can keep on, like he's a man, the dude's just brilliant, man. If man. he can keep on out outsmarting his his former coaches and take advantage of these young QBs like Allen, like Darnold. Old Fitz Magic and potentially two. If he can take advantage of those things with a somewhat workable schedule, hey man, he might get to nine to seven sneaking their playoff. But I think they're risking it. Uh, NFC East. Uh, this is pretty much the easiest. This is chalk. This is so easy. Uh, it's, only, <laughs> it's only two teams for now. I mean, I, I, I think I think Washington and Giants are are making. Oh my god, yeah, Washington. Yeah, I said it right. Washington and Giants are are making strides. Um, but you know, inconsistent. You know, coach obviously Rivera, uh, Joe Judge, a new coach, so he's automatically four. Rivera's third in, in that division. I, I don't think he's better than McCarthy or or uh, Doug Peterson. Um, but you know, you, you you don't have a great quarterback. He's going to be ranked fourth in this one. The roster is, is up and coming. 
The defense is going to be solid. The offense, we'll, we'll see from Haskins what we get. Same thing for the Giants. It, it, it got a lot of question marks. We know it's chalk. Yeah, Dallas, yeah. Dallas, Dallas or Philly. I mean, yeah, I, I think we did. It's pretty much the same. You know, coaching wise, McCarthy, Peterson, Rivera, uh, and Joe Judge. Yeah, Joe Judge. <laughs> last he's a rookie. Just again, you man. got then. Oh man, uh, then we got <laughs> Wentz, Dak, Daniel Jones, Haskins, and the roster. We gave the Cowboys a a, a, a roster because it's loaded, and then everybody else kind of was a B. A B or below. Like, Eagles have a decent roster, but everybody else, the Giants got too many holes, Redskins got to fill some needs. Chalk, Chalk. one, two, forget, forget the rest. It's, it's, it's going to be Eagles, it's going to be Eagles and Cowboys when you, when you, when you come down to it. And it's, it's, it's pretty much a, a safe bet to, I mean, I think we both agree that Cowboys are the better team uh, going to the season, but we saw last year, it, it didn't matter who Eagles had on the field, they still was able to win. So, We'll see. We'll see what happens uh, in in that division. But definitely, you, you gotta you gotta trust the Cowboys. You gotta trust the Eagles, especially over the Giants and the uh, team in Washington. Haskin Haskin and them boys. Uh, AFC <laughs> no, AFC North. This is kind of crazy. Uh, I think they had. I think this this is the best division with rosters, um, top to bottom. Like even 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 Cincinnati on their way up. Um, you know, just just adding Joe Burrow and finally getting their franchise quarterback. But Zach Taylor has a long way to go before he can get into that. Before he, I think he had a long way to go before he can even compete with Kevin Stefanski. Um, in, in All right, I, I, I got one for you right here: AFC North or NFC West for roster, or just how like, tough it is. They, like they, they, they both loaded, man, because like the Browns' roster is crazy, right? But like you said, we got Cliff right fourth. I mean, we put Cliff over here; he probably still third or fourth. Yeah, yeah, he he be, he definitely might be so, third, yeah, third or four, yeah. Um, I was I would say NFC West, just because I'm I'm, I'm a believer in Cliff and Kyler, and I think if they're the last yeah. ones, I think you know they they've been in Cincinnati, yeah, right, exactly. So, um, but this division is crazy. Uh, Lamar Jackson, Big Ben is finally back healthy. We 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 lost on this last year because of Big Ben. We was all in on Man. the Steelers, and when he got hurt, kill, week one, this, bro. you went from kill the best this. quarterback. I mean, yes, Lamar had an MVP season, but going into the season. Ben uh, Ben was the best quarterback, and then you went from the worst to like the eighth because <laughs> Robert Griffin better than better than <laughs> better than Duck. <laughs> man, hey, for real, you went from the best quarterback to man barely top ten because everybody else back up. I mean, I'll take Ryan Finley over Duck and Mason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm taking other teams back up and that third string if I take these dudes. Man, for real, and they, I mean, if and they still eight and eight. That's because of the roster, because of the coach, uh, who we both have Mike Tomlin ranked number one. So you know. This year we got Lamar as the consistent number one quarterback, John Harbaugh number two, coach in this and division. Ravens fans, don't don't trip off Harbaugh being number two. Like it's it's a toss up. Mike Sun yeah. and Harbaugh both both great coaches, both have Super Bowls. It can go either way, okay. But that Ravens, that Ravens roster though, I, I think I think Steelers have a great roster as well. But that Ravens roster is something crazy, and the secondary is nasty. You got Calais Campbell. On the on the end, man. This these guys, these guys, Baltimore. I, you got it's not really too much you can say about them. Man, I know people are gonna see it coming this year, but Baltimore could still probably be a 12, 14 win team. Like, I know the Madden curse thing exists, but Lamar, the best QB, Harbaugh can be one or two at your coach. The roster is a plus. I mean, no, I mean they have no gaps. And right. then they're they're in the rumor mill with the Seahawks to potentially get a B. I mean, it's lights out. Wear the black uniforms every week. It's lights out. <laughs> uh, I was about to say, and the crazy thing is, we talking about all this, all this Ravens talk, but we believe Pittsburgh Steelers are right there. Like, like if, if Ravens get four, oh, yeah. if Ravens get fourteen and fourteen and two, I think Pittsburgh easily go twelve and four, right, right yeah, behind. Five, so, four, yeah. so uh, you know, we, in the Cleveland, the Cleveland, the Cleveland, we'll see. But we we do believe that they are a a solid team, and they can be from eight and eight to they can go crazy and get eleven and five. You don't know. Um, and then our last last division, the AFC North. Uh, this is another one that's pretty chalk. Uh, we you, you pretty much know that it's it's been Minnesota Green Bay for a long time. When you had the sporadic Chicago Bears, or you had the Detroit Lions come out of nowhere for a couple of years, um, but the QB play in Chicago just not what it is, and the roster in Detroit is not what it is. To be able to compete with the consistency of the Minnesota Vikings and the Green Bay Packers, um, I think the roster for the Green Bay has gotten up to that level where you can compete with Minnesota's now, just outside of the quarterback. Um, and with that being said, I think those two teams is their division to win or lose. Uh, so you, you're going to have to do you believe in 
do you believe in what the Vikings has always has, like stability and stuff like that, with Kirk Cousins now in the third year? Or are you going to you know, go with Aaron Rodgers, who, yes, he may be on the way down, but he still has some good years left. The receiver core is not as good. So, you know, that, that's, you, know you, you have to battle that out between what do you think. Um, I think we, we, we consistent on the Vikings having the best coach, Packers' best quarterback. The roster is about the same for the Vikings and the Packers. I think the Vikings slightly edge them out. Um, and it's all going to be up to the schedule when guys play win. Um, does the Vikings get somebody early in the season? So those are, the, are going to be the, the, the key factors for this division. You see Travis Kelsey getting paid, George Kittle getting paid. You got Bills, old lineman getting paid. You got all these coaches getting extensions, man. Dallin Cook, like, man, where am I bad? <laughs> like, 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 where am I in it? Man, I mean, I, I'm out here asking for the bag. Y'all ain't trying to give me the bag. So, mm. I mean, that could play a part in the season, knowing you know, he's had a few injuries here and there. No more Stephon Diggs. Uh, Hunter's gone. Of course, some more turned over on defense, but luckily they do have a defensive guy as the coach who can kind of cover that stuff up. Right. So um, I always look at Minnesota like I look at the Cowboys. They're going to alternate good and bad years. Uh, they had a good year last year, so I'm expecting a, probably an a okay year. Like this, this, this could be their 8-8, eight 9-7 and, eight, and seven year, something like that. And then like the Cowboys, they were 8-8 eight and eight last year. They, they could take a little leap up this year to 10-11 wins. Like, that's how I kind of view teams like that um, from the NFC. Um, but Green Bay, another year with Aaron Rodgers in the floor, they should have some more chemistry. Aaron Jones should emerge. Adams should be more healthy. And outside of the 49ers last year, they were kind of beating everybody. They just couldn't handle, <laughs> they couldn't handle the 49ers. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they can avoid that matchup this time and have a better year. I would say, yeah, Packers did win some games. They probably shouldn't have, too. But, you know, I digress a little bit. Um, so with, with that, we do have our own individual – like what we went through the schedule, who we thought was going to the playoffs. But based off just the, the profit playoff theory and all our calculations, stuff like that, um, here, here's our combined teams, the seven teams in playoffs before we get out of here. Uh, in the NFC, no order. This is just strictly based off the numbers of coaching and the quarterbacks and the roster and stuff. The Saints, Dallas, uh, San Francisco, Seattle, Green Bay, Minnesota, and the Eagles, uh, Philadelphia. So, that, that that would be the seven teams in the in the in the NFC, and you think about it, I mean Sean Payton, uh, you think of Dak Prescott and McCarthy now, Kyle Shanahan, like you, you, hey, Russell Wilson, Rogers, Mike Zimmer. It basically, it's, it basically follows right. top two of everything. Right, top two of everything. Um, in, in the AFC, we have Kansas City, uh, Baltimore, uh, the Buffalo Bills, Pittsburgh Steelers, Houston Texans, the Indianapolis Colts. Surprisingly. The Cleveland Browns. That's what the playoff the playoff profit the profit playoff theory has said that the Cleveland Browns slightly edges out. I think we have the same surprise team, uh, and, and they slightly edge out our surprise team in the AFC. So, uh, what do you think about what do you think about the Cleveland Browns being in there? I can see it, man. Stefanski, uh, you know, he can help develop Baker a little bit more. Odell's had surgery, healthy. Chubb, Hunt. Loaded defense, Miles Garrett not hitting people in the head. You should be good. <laughs> Facts. Um, so, do, I, I think I think what's crazy is so we both have individually they're in our playoffs, but not not based on our, on our uh, on our theory that the Denver Broncos are a team oh, yeah. that everybody should be watching out for. Um, and I, they become trendy, man. Like all sports shows are talking about Denver being the surprise team, so they kind of become trendy. I might yeah. have to. I mean, I'm all in on them. I might need to go pick another team, man, so I can stand <laughs> out, man. <laughs> I'm about to say, and I have the other team, um, another team that I think is a surprise, and we talked about them a lot on this show already. That's the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, individually, I have them in the playoffs as a seven seed. Um, and that's that's slightly edging out the Buccaneers and the Eagles. Um, but, you know, if you if I'm a betting man, I'm going to ride with a theory over over what I'm saying because I, I, just, I just feel like Kyler Murray and Cliff are going to hit this ascension, so – uh, we'll see if they do or not. Man, I, I, I'm all in on Broncos, but I might throw my my bet on the Colts this year, man. Oh yeah, I like I like that one too. All right, man. Uh, that's our that's our private playoff theory. Um, we we're gonna we're gonna keep diving into it as the season goes on, so everybody can understand. So, um, Rashad, man, it was a good show, wasn't it? Oh yeah, man. I'm gonna watch some of these bubble games and see how this eight nine matchup gonna play out. Exactly. All right, preach, care, preach. We're Rashad. We out.